Praise the Lord. Your Amen. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. Your your pastor is truly an amazing man. Pastor Sam. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. I I celebrate everyone again. Thank you so much for this opportunity. There's a lot to do, so we'll just pray and get straight to the business of the night. Amen. Let's hold hands together. Praise the Lord. Are you playing for me? Go ahead, both of you. Just play something for me. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we lift up your name. 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 One more time, let it be from the depth of your heart. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. Hallelujah. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will bless us tonight. Let your word come with power. Change our lives in the name of Jesus. Empower us. Give us wisdom. And we decree and declare that forever you remain glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray amen and amen god bless you please be seated amen excuse me praise the lord if you were not here yesterday um i would request that you get the I'm sure there should be a way of accessing the the materials please do well to get it it's very important because we'll be taking it off from there um, but then let me just do a quick recap for the sake of those who were not able to make it yesterday we began discussing the economic system of the kingdom please do not forget uh, today would be part two if you want to call it um, and i started by opening our eyes to the mystery of time that the battle for wealth and prosperity is not just about the desire to use money to prove a point that there is a program and there is an agenda that is bigger than the personal interest of men it's important you get this that prosperity is not just about the the propensity for affluence but is a time redemption strategy are we together paul was teaching the church in ephesus and he admonished them to redeem time and he said the reason why they should redeem time was because the days were evil and the days are still evil and so we must access the systems that make for time redemption i also spoke about preserving our soul while we prosper that satan is not after your money he's not after real estate he's not after any of these things he's after the souls of men and that he will use the journey or your desire your need for financial prosperity to force you to exchange it for your soul and the bible says what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and then loses his soul um then we began to discuss a few foundational thoughts to take note of i would just do a quick recap on them number one that in the economy of the kingdom we must realize that all blessings and that includes wealth all blessings come from god can you say that please all blessings come that in this kingdom men structures systems jobs businesses are only conduits not sources 
are we together now it's a fundamental spiritual understanding that we must have so your boss your job your business your investment whatever it is is only a vehicle a funnel there is only one god who is called abba source sustainer protector preserver and if you make any other thing become him in your life even if he gave it to you his jealousy will still fight it are we together so we must have this foundational understanding and i did say yesterday that in this kingdom owners are rebels we this kingdom we do not own things owners are rebels genesis chapter 1 and genesis chapter 2 you may freely eat of the tree it is not yours but you may freely eat notice in the parable of the prodigal son for as long as he was partaking of the father's blessings there was limitless abundance but he wanted ownership and lack came the moment ownership came until he now began to feed with the swine but he did what many of us would need to do this night he said how many hired servants do my the bible said he came to himself and he said i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say unto him father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son but take me as one of your servants the bible says while he was afar off he saw his father it's interesting that the father never spoke to him about what happened he just embraced him and restored the signet ring a symbol of royalty you are now back to the family that is limitless and then he beckoned on the people to slaughter the lambs and all of that and his other brother wanted to make the same mistake you know that i'm not teaching on the parable but let me digress to just say something did you know that in that parable both of them committed the same sin the only difference was that one acted out his own while the other one kept his own in his heart but all of them did the same thing hallelujah and so we began to discuss kingdom laws um i told us yesterday we're trying to reconcile the the uh challenge that has been between the business world and men and women of god as to what specific spiritual laws are responsible for the blessings of god and here we have men of god and our spiritual approach and we have proofs to show for it and on this side we have business people veterans of commerce who debunk all the nonsense they believe is being taught in church and they also have proofs to show for it and i told us yesterday that all of them are correct they are only incomplete that the spiritual laws that govern wealth and abundance and the natural laws that govern wealth and abundance are together called kingdom laws are we together yes and i did say to us that the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance are responsible for the manifestation of resources that includes finances but then the natural laws are responsible for the management and the multiplication of resources if you're with me please say amen, amen. And so we discussed a few spiritual laws let me just recap in one or two minutes number one i told us yesterday that the first spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance is not tithing is not giving is not sowing is called the law of absolute surrender please never forget this before god would accept your seed before god would accept your tithe or whatever it is he wants your heart my son give me your heart and then let your eyes be attentive to my ways i observed yesterday that this is the this this slim difference is what makes the prosperity message as we know ineffective because when you mentor people um, and teach them finances without their hearts tilted toward the things of god you're only going to multiply lost are we together yes the value 
of the teachings of finances is when your heart has already been inclined to the ways of god at that point no amount no level of lifting will destroy you you know a lot of people talk as if money doesn't have any power they say what is there 10 million 1 million 1 billion you know we just mention it carelessly let me tell you the bible respects money did you hear what i said the bible respects money if the word of god respects money then um dishonoring it is 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 going to be to your disadvantage money is powerful it can do many things money can make people smile they can smile without it but it can also make people smile are we together money can solve a lot of problems money can broker peace money can create efficiency money can engender speed it's important that we do not try to downplay the importance of this so the law of absolute surrender number one number two the law of tithing i told us that tithing is not just about money is the law of open heavens number three um the law of giving and i told us that there are many dimensions to giving our first fruit worship offering prophet offering but then i did note three that would be very important if we intend to rise financially number one kingdom investments for the sake of thy house i desire thy prosperity number two prophets offering that you can connect to a grace through honor and tap into the dimensions of god that have been made possible onto that individual and then number three seed faith you will want to listen again to what i said about seed faith i told us that the principle of seed faith is not just bringing money out and dropping it it's not even just tying an expectation that seed faith is a principle that was tied to resurrection that means that you can kill anything by tying its life to the seed and burying them together and when that seed dies whatever was tied to it dies too you can tie your pain you can tie a season you want to close in your life to a seed and as the seed dies that season also dies and another season comes with that resurrection it's a powerful mystery now many people have sown seeds you see in this kingdom you are not empowered by your action you are empowered by the understanding that supports your action you can do many things that have the semblance of obedience and yet not receive the blessings attached to it because your understanding towards it um, is unfruitful many people there are several seeds scattered here and now it's, it's important to know that seed faith is powerful most people do it because they believe someone who taught them who is doing it but it's important for us to work with convictions have convictions a strong persuasion you can sow your pain with a seed and resurrect joy with the harvest it's a principle that works you can close seasons in your life there's all kinds of things happening in your office you can tie that situation to that seed and as that's why i observed yesterday that it is dangerous to steal money in church because you don't know what was tied to the money that was dropped to you you just see one thousand naira a hundred dollars and you pick it quickly but you just picked a seed with a problem that has not died the problem is still alive with the seed so when you find someone stealing in church it's, it's not even an issue to quarrel the person the person needs to go for a retreat because he's already in trouble by default hallelujah we wrapped up yesterday by discussing the return channels i told us that when you engage the spiritual laws as i have mentioned there are return channels that come immediately immediately number one is favor with men if you didn't write it yesterday please write it now when you follow through with the spiritual laws that govern wealth and abundance favor with men luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and jesus grew the bible says in wisdom in stature and in favor with god and men favor with god and men favor with god and men 
the proof of favor is not money the proof of favor is the loyalty of the hearts of men towards you are we together very important favor what is favor someone inconveniencing himself to see that you move forward that's favor when people can bend over backwards to see to it that you make progress with no strings attached that's favor because you see i, I have always said it and i'll continue to say that everybody who blesses you has relatives who are in need whatever will make him leave them and come to you must be divine are we together favor number two wisdom wisdom is very important there is a relationship between wisdom and wealth doth not wisdom cry the bible says it says with me are riches wealth and honor wisdom speaking yea durable riches and righteousness by me kings reign and princes decree justice wisdom is very important divine direction thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying this is the way that you will walk therein and you will find rest for your souls then divine strategies it is important there is a way that cement right unto a man the bible says but the end thereof are the ways of death you will need wisdom wisdom to know what to do and to know how to do it praise the lord and then number three the third return channel for obeying spiritual laws is the activation of what the bible calls the blessing everybody please say it after me the blessing many of you who follow dr copeland you would have heard him talk a lot about the blessing and um i've been blessed by people's perspective of the blessing but i think that it's not been explained satisfactorily there's there's nothing mystical as it were about the blessing the blessing is more than an anointing the blessing is more than a pronunciation the blessing is a dimension of the ministry of the holy spirit upon a man that begins to cause that man to operate magnetic properties the same way you know a magnet it 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 wields upon an individual a force of attraction compelling men compelling resources and programming circumstances that ensure that your life becomes the garden of eden that is the assignment of the blessing you can know you carry the blessing not just because you were prayed upon the circumstances that have been drawn to your life good things are delayed until you show up that's the blessing if you are not there circumstances will seem to act themselves waiting until you come that was what daniel carried into the lion's den it was not just the presence of the angel something upon him invited the angel to that pit and then made the lions to be at peace the blessing is very powerful is a grace an operation of the holy spirit upon a man business people call it the law of attraction it's an attempt because they they noted in their dealings in their study of economy and commerce they noticed that certain human beings seem to exhibit magnetic properties so they started calling people money magnets they started calling people and all of that and they brought forth what we call the law of attraction and for those of you who are science based you would have studied something that a dear man in history who contributed in no small way to science called sir isaac newton in his study of mechanics he came up with certain laws and he called it the 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 law of um gravitation is that true yes he noticed that it looked like everything you are looking for is also looking for you that there is a constant attraction between bodies he was not lying all of these things are scientific attempts to explain this mystery that can be upon a man the same way something can be upon you that makes sure anything good becomes bad this is what people call bad luck bad luck is not a phenomenon it's a reaction there is something upon you that insists that everything good leaves you when you bless a man who carries that atmosphere it's a waste of time something must orchestrate itself to see to it that pain resumes in your life 
are we together the blessing you can carry it every territory is alive it knows those who carry this grace and once they are within the confines of that territory that magnetic property begins to occur so you find out someone who should travel stays back not knowing why he stayed back there is a central control system manipulating men insisting that those to be blessed be blessed suddenly someone has an urge to sow a piece of land and your your image begins to come and then he has a dream and because he listens to his wife very well god will use the wife to say i've i've been sensing that we should bless this man it's not ordinary and it's not just the issue of prophecy it is called the blessing in the name of jesus tonight let it come upon someone's life many people who continue to say they are carrying the blessing the truth is they are not carrying it because their life does not show it the blessing is too loud that in your most the the most modest of your state it will still speak if it's not there it's not there period you see it's important to know what is there and what is not there so you can humble yourself and receive acting out and making bold face over what is not there will continue to punish us again I don't like to tell myself lies what is not there is not there why fake what can be real i can open up myself and receive so that when it is upon me it will show abuja is a good land the earth here is a good land there is an increase the bible says the increase of the earth is for all that even the king is fed by it if the earth has not yielded its increase it is because something upon you is speaking to the earth to reject you are we together say after me in the name of jesus please say it say in the name of jesus i decree and declare in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the blessing is upon me say it in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the blessing is upon me attracting men attracting opportunities programming circumstances please sit down this is how it works the concept of greedy and stingy people is a relative statement nobody is really greedy let me tell you just because people do not bless you doesn't mean they cannot give someone will refuse to give you 10 naira and yet carry a car to someone else and say can i have the honor of giving it to you so is was that man greedy no what is upon you is what controls what is around you please find a way of believing this everything around you is a report card is telling you what is on you and then when it changes it also tells you what has changed thou anointest my head with oil but the proof of that anointing is seen in my cup you don't anoint my cup it is my head you anoint but my cup shows what is on my head so what is in my cup tells the kind and the quality of what is upon my head if my cup is empty the problem is not the cup not the business not the job is what is on you thou anointest my head with oil and then i know what is on my head by what happens around my cup are we together praise the lord so never forget favor 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 is powerful very powerful in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters a king hates a woman and she stops becoming queen a king likes another woman she becomes queen immediately saul loves mephibosheth and in a moment he's asked to sit with him at the palace and ziba who was sent to lodeba had 15 sons and yet the king did not come 15 handsome agile boys favor is powerful nobody gives to you just because they love you they are compelled by a system that is beyond this realm 
there is a name god is called the father of spirits he is able to manipulate spirits according to his counsel to bless you hmm. hallelujah when the prophet prophesied over samaria and said by this time tomorrow notice that when he said that the spirit of god started hovering round and it came upon four lepers and they started having the urge to communicate with themselves let us go that's how the spirit of prophecy works so when a word comes be blessed and you say amen the way it works is that the spirit of wisdom that is released in honor of that prophecy starts going around the region where you live and starts looking for the human actors that must make that word come to pass you, you get how it works this is how prophecy works so if i say in the name of jesus be lifted and you say amen if i'm truly anointed and god is honored in that statement the spirit of wisdom that proceeds from that word will start going around abuja from city from region to region finding men who are aligned enough to partner with the holy spirit and there are too many men everybody will not say no the bible says how forcible are right words there is a compelling power someone somewhere will agree with god that is why when you tie your life to a man and say i'm finished it's an insult to god because there are how many people are on earth now 7.2 billion people that, that's enough if you're a movie director you know that, that that's too many actors god can use anybody when a man beats his chest and say without me god says nonsense let me use another person i am still abba i can use anyone to bring my word to pass are we together you have to understand how this thing works so that you can defend your blessing because let me tell you something i'll be showing you something shortly many people um when when they see the blessing of the lord upon a man's life and this is one of the challenges of successful people when they look around your life and they cannot find the requisite level of systems that should warrant that kind of blessing they begin to suspect they do not know that spiritual things do not operate like natural things how did you suddenly become a hundred million naira richer by a weekend which business did you do and then the person says will you believe me when i explain it to you that is something that is upon me say no no i don't believe that nonsense so it's important that you are able to defend the blessing of god upon your life so that when people look at you after this service and say yesterday we ate together what suddenly happened when has saul become one of the prophets you will say saul met samuel I, I i know that i left my house as a miserable gentleman on my way to rescue my father's donkey but i met samuel and he spoke something to me samuel blessed saul and told him you will see three people both of them or all of them holding two loaves of bread they will bow to you and give you as though they didn't know what to do with it please sit down so i welcome you to tonight's session let's let's begin in the name of jesus christ praise the lord amen amen and amen are we together praise god are you playing it okay something is wrong please pay attention in the name of jesus do not allow anything distract you whatever distracts you this night is an attack fight it reject it and um he told martha he said martha you are worried and upset about many things one thing is needful one thing is needful one thing is needful set your gaze let your eyes be like a flint let your spirit he said he that hath an ear let him hear that means not everybody has that kind of ear you have to pray and believe god open my eyes open my ears let me hear and let me see in the name of jesus we are going to discuss the natural laws now remember i told you that the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance are responsible for the arrival of financial resources but you will need more than the arrival of financial resources because the bible says please look up 
and don't feel insulted if at any point whatever i say just seems to sting you this is why we're in a shift in the name of jesus the bible says a good man look up please the bible describes a good man in many ways it says a good man part of the indices that is used to measure the goodness of men is his ability to leave an inheritance for his children's children africa hear me this is where our problem is we have disobeyed this scripture for many centuries there are many good men but there are there is hardly transgenerational wealth in africa are we together the lifespan of anything is less than a century in most parts of this nation and most parts of africa and so every young man starts from ground zero in fact others start from minus you have to pay the debt that was owed before you start now it's a very serious issue we're discussing are we together the bible says you know a good man when he secures his grandchildren before he dies this is this is a system that is being practiced in places like israel even till today that means you are poor until your grandchildren can live off your blessing then when you leave you live with honor then the next person like that but notice that the graph of wealth in africa is always a this way you plateau somewhere maybe at the apex of your profession while you are working and then at retirement or whatever happens you just go down and sometimes you go down to look like your past praise the lord so a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children it's important that we learn these principles so that the body of christ is empowered so we can have the time to be able to serve the purposes of god and birth the revival that has been long spoken about praise the lord please look at me anybody you find ignoring the issue of finances is either ignorant or he's about to learn a lesson look up please you know many times when we talk about the issue of finances because of the 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 propensity of the flesh and carnality around it most people just reject it as a show of spirituality they reject it to show how serious they are with god that that state is very faulty it may be a well-meaning communication but people who adopt that model will punish a generation we do the things that we do because we are looking beyond ourselves as you are listening to this now think of your children married or not as you are listening to this think of your grandchildren don't gather people when you are about to leave and tell them you see how my life is and and all of that no it should be in honor there are many children today inconveniencing families inconveniencing nation terrorist groups leverage on this carelessness to recruit people and it's not it's not we cannot just generically say revival is coming we must deal with the details that empower darkness and let me tell you chiefest among them is this this financial issue it, this demon of money people have died driving because they were broke they were driving and forgot that there was a tree in front of them and died marriages have been broken today because of money what armed robbers could not do what relatives could not do money came and cheaply caused that divide many pastors who started well loving god with all their hearts they were compelled to compromise on their values not because they backslid in the reality of bread to eat don't don't please don't allow ignorant people make you think that this is just some pentecostal talk about money not everybody is foolish we are discussing this from a balanced kingdom angle people who love god and are doggedly committed to seeing his glory come please let's not mix everything and confuse what we are saying here are we blessed yes 
many families many extended families are at loggerheads today because of properties because of land mundane things they would not gather together to call upon the name of the lord they gather to blame people how many wives have killed their husbands so they die fast how many husbands have killed their wives how many children today young people in nigeria they continue to anticipate the death of their parents because it looks like it's the cheapest way of stepping into these things look at the kidnapping that is almost becoming an industry now why will i do business and get hundred hundred naira when i can steal a man and in one week i i become 10 million naira richer and don't you think people will keep quiet if they see that is lucrative we will lose our children if we ignore this we will lose a generation if we ignore this many people today have married outside of the will of god money directed them outside of the will of god into their predicaments there are many young men that would have married since they found their life partners more than a decade ago but lack of money the money for introduction is not even there listen are you aware that less than 10 percent of graduates haven't spent five years six years others 10 years in any institution at all there is no guarantee for a good job there are graduates pushing gates today all around the world what makes you think if they find an opportunity to compromise they will not bend they will bend in a heartbeat they will bend praying in tongues I'm provoking you for a reason that's the only way to make you believe what I'm about to say are we together you know sir someone met me one time and told me that someone had told him that they were recruiting for a job true story and that they said for the person to get the job the person will have to bring 250,000 as some kind of incentive it's a story i was told if you have two hundred thousand, will you be looking for two hundred and fifty thousand to now bribe let me tell you how you enter a realm is how you will be maintained there if you compromise to get in there you will be compelled to rem to compromise we're talking of the blessings of god with the dignity of kingdom integrity hallelujah many people today have died who should not have died very cheap medical procedures that could be carried out and they died and we said that's the plan of god many of our children may not have the privilege to go to good schools not because there are no schools but you go to a school where the teacher and the student are both arguing about the answer now this is the kind of look at the, the child i mean i'm not i'm not being sarcastic i hope you understand what i'm saying the teacher says it's five the child says no it's four and the man says okay it's three it's four let me check again now look at the kind of person now watch this we're talking about leaders of tomorrow and we're, we're very vocal about it but look at the person controlling the understanding of your child you ask the child what do you want to become he says an aeronautic engineer that's almost impossible already with that kind of foundation it's not just a demonic attack please while you are seated in one minute can you blast in tongues and say lord change my life i came for a shift i have seen the evil and the disaster that lack and poverty brings to my life to your program this is not lost it's not carnality it's a drive to see his kingdom come it's a drive to see territories transform hallelujah please sit down psalm 112 blessed is the man that feared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands the bible says his seed you are not great when your seed is not great 
his seed shall be mighty upon earth then he says the generation notice the progression the man first then his seed then the generation that comes from him blessed is the man that fears the lord that delighted greatly in his commands his seed shall be mighty upon earth not just in heaven the generation of the upright shall be blessed then he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever a testimony you your children yes are we together praise the lord so let's deal with a few of the natural laws and i want you to please pay attention in the name of jesus the first natural law that governs wealth and abundance and let me observe the protocol i did as i did yesterday i know that there are great veterans of business here there probably may be lecturers in business schools and all of that i do not in any way mean to insult your pedigree i respect you and what you represent your labor over the years but i will plead in the name of jesus that we pay a bit of attention to the truths that i communicate the truths that i communicate are not just my opinions they are not just revelations that came from heaven directly they are also years of careful mentorship from people who have results that follow the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained not are obtaining what we seek to get is already someone's testimony and so it's important that we respect these things is a pathway jeremiah 6 16 he says to stand and to watch and to ask 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 of the ancient part and that when you find it walk therein and he promises you that you will enter your sabbath you will find rest hallelujah the first law the first natural law of wealth and abundance is called the law of mental transformation please write it down the law of mental transformation it's amazing that pe when people are talking about the blessings of the lord the first thing they talk about is business investments all of that is only a programming of severe casualties and punishment when your mind is unfruitful the law of mental transformation proverbs chapter 23 please and verse 7 let's rush so that we can make progress tonight proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 for as he thinketh please look up the word heart there is often changed with mind for as he thinketh in his heart he didn't say so he will become he says so he is already as he thinketh in his heart as he thinketh in his mind the summation of your belief systems your paradigm your level of enlightenment the bible says you are it not you will become it this is very very important psalm 78 please and verse 41 psalm 78 and verse 41 the psalmist gave us a very powerful information he said verse 41 psalm 78 he says yea look up please they turned their back and tempted god and did what they limited the holy one now this is a dangerous scripture please leave it there god is unlimited god should not be limited this is a statement that is almost not correct and yet the bible says a man can limit god they limited the holy one of israel that means that my mind can limit the potentials of god so that what you see in and through my life is not a true reflection of what god can do it's a reflection of the allowance that my paradigm and my understanding has allowed watch this when you go to turn on a tap how many of you know that there's so much water so much volume but if i turn it just a little it will continue to drip it can take almost three hours to fill a bucket that's not the potential of the water board that's not the potential of the tap it's a reflection of the allowance the water board must make do with the provision that i gave and if that tap is you 
then there is no mystery behind the 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 scarcity of the operation of the blessings of god upon our lives are we together please the law of mental transformation there are many well now this is where the problem is sir especially for those of us who love god those who are serious is is more is a very serious issue because we have been mentored largely now i'm speaking to the body of christ we have been mentored to focus on our spiritual development as the only index for growth so your prayer your fasting your night vigil that's very important and we downplay the relevance of working on your mind we make it look as though once your spirit is alive forget about what happens to your mind forget about what happens to your body just discuss with the realm of the spirit and end there this is the fallacy that has bred the superstitious belief of Africa so we fast correct we pray correct we teach people to be chaste to be holy to be true correct but we do not know watch this I'm going to show you a scripture that will bless you that your destiny is a reflection of your understanding you don't make money of business you don't make money off a shop you make money off your understanding and if your understanding is unfruitful you are in trouble i say this respectfully especially to we the men and women of god around africa that god has granted grace to mentor and lead people when people settle in our churches in our groups our communications are mind controlled methods and it's important we expose the people to the whole counsel of god not just perspectives we are used to not just perspectives that were denominationally inclined i say this respectfully with a burden for the body otherwise we will continue confessing things we will never see the law of mental transformation as he thinketh in his heart so is he go with me please to genesis 11 let's read scripture genesis chapter 11 let's start from verse 2 is someone getting blessed and we're standing here only because you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you may now watch this genesis 11 you are going to see a scripture that has no mention of demons you are going to see a scripture that has no mention of satan and yet you will watch something in this scripture that will teach us a very instructive lesson are you ready please the bible says and it came to pass this is the story of nimrod the son of cush are we together now the bible says it came to pass as they journeyed from the east they found a plain in the land of china and they dwelt there we're reading to verse 5 the bible says they said to one another go to let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly they made bricks for stone and slime they had for mortar verse 4 and they said now watch this let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves please keep that scripture there now i'm not arguing about the theological correctness of whether it was a natural building or spiritual building that's not where i'm, I'm that's not my the, the my, my my point of reference now but i'm saying watch this nimrod the son of cush is captain over a people are we together now he's speaking to them about his proposing an idea that they build a city whose tower will reach the heaven so that they would make a name for themselves are we together they had not started the building 
but he was indoctrinating their minds letting them know this is a possibility because you see your mind thinks in pictures that is the reason why anything that does not have a pictorial representation cannot be captured in your mind if i say orange you know what i'm talking about the the picture of an orange just comes if i say mango it comes why they teach children basic education they attach words to images car and they draw something this is how your mind thinks so now he's painting a picture a city whose tower look up please will reach the heavens let us make a name for ourselves are you ready for verse 5 now look up please read verse 5 if you are born again ready one to read and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded stop in god's mind the tower was finished look at it they've not started building but god was seen from the realm of the spirit who is this building this is your bible god came down and said someone is constructing something here that means everything in life is built twice first in your mind when it is built here it is impossible for it to not be built sit down believers and we're standing here only because and the lord now if he said an angel we may say it's the angel of the devil and the lord he uses his personal name yahweh left heaven his throne and came down to say someone is building they they had not started the construction but in the realm of the spirit a tower was rising already you may be in your little room my brothers and sisters whereas god is building the estate in your mind and you think you are not making progress listen to me please look up anything you hold physically that was not built there you only held a rubber ring it will return it must live your life herein lies the fallacy of living a fake life because you are only wasting your time there must be a registration of that possibility in your mind this is not metaphysics this is not christian science this is the principle of the kingdom so while you are in your room your mind is building the church the members are coming the crusades are happening and you are dreaming with god in your room and it looks like you see this is where ignorant people who are not of the faith will look at you and say you are not making progress in your life what kind of person are you you are not moving and you say i may not be moving but i'm building building you've been in abuja for two years you are not doing anything and god says you really think you are not doing anything you are building a mall in your mind every time you study those materials an expansion is happening listen i give you a guarantee in the name of honesty whatever is built here will be built please sit down let's help ourselves to rise intentionally so that we can defend what happens to us it is true that is the grace of god but when you are blessed we will not speak like foolish people if you know how god brings the blessings upon you you will be able to help others rise that's why stealing and looting is a terrible way to becoming wealthy because there is no pathway to mentor another person into it are we together verse 6 please give us verse 6 media help us now watch this the lord said behold please look up please the people is one who is speaking now your god and they all have one language and this they begin to do now physically they have finished it in the realm of the spirit they are about to start it and hear the testimony that god is giving about men who have built he says and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined please sit down 
these guys were not born again these guys did not have the advantage of the holy spirit this is fallen man when god tells you nothing can restrain a man he would have searched by his intelligence what can restrain these people and you're standing here only because Ephesians chapter 3 the law of mental transformation blessed be the name of the Lord and verse 20 please let's hurry up so that we can cover much tonight before we pray God is changing someone's life please look up can you read it with me it's projected ready one to read now unto him that is able to do exceeding read on abundant all we ask or think according to the power that works in us please keep that scripture there you would have heard me make this example again and again if i say sit here or here it means either places have equal value are we correct now sit here or here drop your prayer request here or here it means that one does not seem to have any advantage above another and the bible says that god can do what we ask and can do what we think not ask and think that means there are two prayer warriors in your life your mouth and your mind they are both praying please sit down sit down while your mouth is confessing lord lift me your mind is saying lord forget about what i just said and the bible says that god is able to do the requests that come from your speaking and the request that comes from your thinking look at me so could your situation today be an answered prayer could it be the prayer request your mind prayed and your mind said forget about all the shouting i shouted in church lord just my current desire is that i remain poor the bible says god is able to do exceeding africa we are a people of prayer i'm a person of prayer we are a people who love god but we have trained the prayer request the prayer warrior that speaks and starved the prayer warrior that thinks this is only the first law the law apostle if all i have is capital and a little shop i know i will be okay <laughs> it's a very very sociological very empathetic disposition but you will never rise that way the law of mental transformation the lamb was slain twice according to scripture number one he was slain from the foundations of the earth number two he was slain in his lifetime please look at me if you can show me what you are building with the holy spirit i show you something that no power in existence will ever be able to stop growing up years ago pastor the hand of god will come upon me and i will run to the back of our house somewhere there and i will just hold the mic and i'm preaching i'm preaching all to myself and sweating and the anointing of the holy spirit is upon me and i'm seeing people and i'm going i'm laying hands on benches and i didn't know i was building let me tell you this that's why when god wants to help you he will allow you go to bed then he will take part of your future and plant it you are supposed to incubate what you just saw you went to bed suddenly you are in a crusade ground you are standing before thousands of people you are ministering under a strange influence of the spirit you get up and you just laugh it away and say man must work and we begin some of these things that we do 
and you stifle something that would have been the foundation of a great destiny your mind so the bible says guard your heart with all diligence you see the reason why watching nonsense exposing i say this respectfully and and god sees my heart i say it from a standpoint of love but our generation especially our generation of young people were in trouble our minds are already programmed to fail the addictiveness of social media when not guarded is why many people are dull today you notice their their iq has gone down naturally the concentration span of the average young man is not more than two minutes after two minutes they are distracted because they have been rewired to make sure you are checking something every minute so the sense of focus to learn is no longer there that includes hearing from god is why we hear truth plus nonsense and join it together and call it revelation because it takes time are we blessed i hope you still love me the law of mental transformation there's too much noise in our world there's too much distraction the average person cannot start a task and finish it in 30 minutes you start a task and after two hours you are watching a movie you are doing something these things are i'm telling you the level of distraction is why our pockets continue to remain empty you called it a shift mental transformation the bible says by the truth then it says in philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 that you permit this mind to be in you that means there was a belief system there was a construction of understanding that made the holy spirit comfortable in jesus it was not just because he was the son of god he says to let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus jesus was not just the word who became flesh the spirit inside a body he had a mind at age 12 when his colleagues were playing he was in the temple building the construction the belief construction that will allow the holy spirit to be comfortable and theologically speaking for 18 years we do not hear anything about jesus again the next time he shows up he's 30 years he's not just a handsome young man ready to start ministry he's a young man who had taken the word into the world and had now become ready when satan came he said it is written subconsciously just came out ask anybody who prospered intentionally they will tell you neglecting your understanding and your paradigm is a recipe it will veto any kind of hard work and insist that you return to your past You have sown seeds i honor you for the seeds you have sown but i will not lie to you if your mind is not transformed transformation does not mean another information transformation means the superior information the requisite body of knowledge allocated for the result you desire not just random acquisition of information are we blessed the law of mental transformation our ideologies and our paradigms will continue to program failure or program greatness now watch this we live in a generation where there is there is this itch and this appetite to show that we are making progress and i'm saying this respectfully is that true everybody wants to know that you are making progress so you have to make sure you dress well you have to make sure if the designers are there everything is fit but the problem there is that when you acquire things physically that your mind did not give birth to you ign you know a danger light a danger light sounds in the realm of the spirit and your mind interprets that breakthrough as a mistake it will alter itself to make sure that which you have leaves you and then it rests because you are now in your default state 
please understand what i'm sharing with you pastor sir if you carry one of your nice shirts and you give a young one of these uh boys that drive truck or move around he will take it and say god bless you sir and wear it notice what will start happening to that shirt a shirt you wore for two years and it's still looking like it's new now the guy wears it and after one month it starts to tear mysteriously it starts to fade the shirt is not tearing the shirt is revealing the mindset of the wearer please understand what i'm telling you please sit down sit down i want to share with you a principle now even if i'm not able to cover the remaining things if you learn this your life will change don't assume you know what i'm saying just pay attention and listen are we together look at me your physical environment is only a mirror it's a mirror of what is happening in your mind anything you get physically that was not gotten here destiny the laws of god will treat it as an error and it will insist that it leaves you this is the fallacy this is why just prophesying to people alone to be blessed will not bring them into sustainable blessings because you can take advantage of the power of the prophetic and program possibilities and they now receive it but it's coming upon a mind that is not transformed the same law of god will interpret it as an error and will cause that breakthrough to vanish and the person returns back to his yesterday now listen your mindset is the only authorized channel for both god and satan to come into your space mindsets are doorways they are not like doorways they literally are doorways are we blessed no matter what your background is please listen to me no matter what your background is you can transit yourself we have to be very honest with ourselves thank you jesus the transformation that happens to you so living a fake life is a dangerous way of punishing yourself because you're going to continue to recycle pain you will keep acquiring things that will only be short-lived there are people who buy cars the car is not here so the 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 discipline and the management system of responsibility that should be inculcated that makes having a car a blessing is not here so you have the car and your carelessness of that pedestrian type lifestyle is now punishing that blessing that god brings so you find out that you can't service it you can't wash it you can't clean it in two weeks your breakthrough has become like you you can get a job and your mindset will make will alter your behavior and make things go bad you can cast and bind and hate the people go to another place there are there are people who sustain understandings that can never bring destiny helpers to them you have not sustained the mindset that acknowledges and and brings honor you have not sustained the mindset that that acknowledges the sacrifices of great people you still have an understanding that trivializes greatness when you see great people you assume it was luck that kind of mindset becomes repulsive to anything good you see any rich man you say look at these thieves they are carrying our jeep and you don't know that this honor closes that door whereas you secretly want a jeep in your heart you see a man of god who is anointed and he says he just got an impartation he says nothing what is there is god that imparts why don't you have it now i hope you understand i'm not being hard on you i'm stretching you for a reason we live in a society that has no regard for the sacrifices of people you see a great man a millionaire man who tells you he was born in one room and you just believe he was just lucky so the day god brings you to meet him that disposition of dishonor becomes pungent for any profitable relationship 
there are people who the lifespan of their relationship is two weeks something about their minds must kill good things it's not just to pray and say oh god bring a destiny helper bring a life partner bring a, a, what they call it a business partner and all of this we only make a fool out of ourselves until your mindset is ready it becomes a waste for good things to come to you you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're rising here only because you may listen it is not just because there was a curse in your family the curse does not work automatically the curse is mindset activated so it depends on the requisite level this is what strongholds are all about strongholds are demonic fortifications around a thinking pattern that insists that the victim continues to think that way it is the state that makes the word of god of non-effect so it's not just that even if you come to the devil and say satan i donate myself he said i can't use you the way you are i need to program an understanding in you that makes my using you profitable you know we make it look like the devil just look up please please take seriously what i'm saying if you ever stop thinking about yourself start thinking about your children it will bring back your concentration to listen seriously to what we are saying apostle nothing is working in my family i agree and the reason is because there is a cause somewhere i may not disagree but that cause and that yoke needs an atmosphere it needs a mindset it needs a belief system the day the belief system is deconstructed it's called deliverance by transformation the messianic prophecy luke chapter 4 jesus took the scroll he said to preach deliverance not only to conduct it to preach Are we blessed the law of mental transformation i want to act out something right now in the name of jesus christ i'm praying that we will never forget this for the rest of our lives let me show you how success happens first and foremost i want you to write success is not a product of what you do alone success happens as a reflection of who you are becoming success happens more because of who you are becoming than what you are doing please understand this true success lasting success transgenerational success is not just a product of what you do it's a product of who you are are we blessed okay um let me use maybe the let me have some gentlemen not our guest here i want about eight of you don't run from the crowd please just you just sit there members of this church any eight gentlemen please come let's celebrate them as they come anybody if we don't have any you can yes just just pick a few people please come eight of you stand facing me please four of you here four of you here watch this the lord gave me this revelation last year and it blessed me one more person please thank you thank you sirs thank you very much it's my prayer that you will never forget what you are acting in the name of jesus now watch this please look up this is success every one of these people let them represent faces of life and levels are we together are we together please the transforming church are we together now watch this there is a law that god himself put on earth in his dealings with men
please watch this the possibilities that we command are a reflection of the realms that we are in mentally speaking first spiritually speaking but mentally speaking all of these dimensions have their blessings attached to it is that all right now watch this everybody watch this don't mind all my acting I'm, I'm insisting that you must understand this is why watch this all of you lift what you're holding please now i am here let's call this level zero please look at this and yet i covet that blessing is everybody seeing it now i covet that man's blessing so by living a fake life i quickly go and get it or they dash me the law immediately detects that there is a problem because i did not grow to the realm that makes this happen this thing will reject me and go back it will bring me back to this realm because i did not grow into that success at this realm watch this i don't have a car i don't have a house i'm in one small room are you getting what i'm saying now this is the realm where you have estates this is the realm where you command the wealth of nations so god speaks to you i will take you far like abraham are we together now genesis 28 if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day then i will set you on high above the nations of the earth and this blessing will come upon you and overtake you so you are here you are hearing this now what many believers do is to continue to to falsely believe and dream and do all kinds of superstitious things in hope that they will reach there the key to getting all this is not looking for them one by one god already saved you that stress because you don't even know some of the things you need the key is to grow now watch this as you grow this is what i want you to do please dress back a little guys for every step i take come towards me too are we ready watch this so i'm studying and i'm praying in my room watch what is happening to me i'm growing mentally these are the things i want and while that is happening i'm still broke when i grow to this level watch this someone now says man of god the lord led me to sow ten thousand now watch this i thought i just entered it you would notice that you come to a realm where people never sow more than ten thousand ten thousand five thousand but at least something is happening i'm growing then i look at great people like papa Ia deboe for it do you know watch this if papa Ia deboe if you see him in a restaurant now trying to get food his realm will fight that result are you seeing that now you will come to him quickly and say daddy no please go back home why are you doing that because a level of transformation and the sacrifice that result is an insult to that realm if papa deboe stands in this church now and says brethren i don't have a vehicle before he finishes before he spells vehicle there will be more cars outside than he needs it's not just because he's anointed the realm of growth necessitates you can't be in this realm without a car no matter how modest you are please sit down now instead of watch this instead of sitting here and dreaming of cars and saying i must get a car i must get a media interview is here the media interview is in this realm it's there so this is what you do while you are growing you are studying you are sitting under a pastor you are growing you are growing you are growing you start seeing results now watch this notice you know you are changing because what you have starts running away from you your one room starts pushing you out of it into a two-bedroom flat it has nothing to do with being humble it's a law no matter how modest you are you grow to a point where that space starts fighting you notice as you grow certain friends that you have it's not whether you want to fight them or not it's not whether they are good or you are good or not the reality of your growth 
does not allow that kind of company again one by one your contact starts changing notice look at me many of you today you cannot tell me where your first phone is remember you didn't throw it remember you didn't give it so it was a living thing when you grew beyond 3310 it left and gave room for another one to come listen true prosperity is prosperity through growth please let's go back god is showing you your mental state now oh god this is 2020 will my life change god says it depends on you last year they spoke over my life but it did not change this is what prophecy did prophecy pushed you but your lack of transformation reversed you and brought you back instead of living a fake life someone here is going to say lord all these things are in abuja and it is true that the word has come from my pastor but i will pay the price to grow for step by step you lead me and i will follow you all of my days listen once upon in my life as a man of god i would go to preach somewhere you've heard me say it and that was my level of transformation i was anointed but it would be an error to be at this realm with that mindset listen your future is looking for you but you've heard me say it's not looking for this version of you so when your future comes he says you are not there because the version it was authorized to bless your prosperity keeps visiting you every day but it does not find you because the version of you it was authorized to bless you have not become it the golf is in your destiny the jeep is in your destiny but every time the jeep visits you it is prohibited from resting upon you because you have not grown to a level where a jeep becomes fair to live with you you can fake it and save and buy you will pay the price and lose it in three in three there are people who should not have anything to do with a business class in the name of honesty you have not transited to that level when you sit there you feel guilty you feel unfair you know you have not grown to that level now please sit down i need to say this because sometimes we act faith is not foolishness we are people of faith but be honest to grow honorably you may be here now you can do your quiet road transport tomorrow you will go to the park and pay for four seats you are still in the park but you are paying for four seats you are growing next time you will take a cab from the park you are growing is that true next time you will now have the luxury to have a driver and a golf that will be taking you every time one time if you refuse to buy a car the ram god's justice system will force someone to give you there is a realm you cannot enter and remain and not be a millionaire it has nothing to do with whether you want to be or not if you actually grow to that realm it it is a violation of that law to be in that realm and still be scratching a recharge card to put in your phone or still be getting one gallon of fuel i'm not trying to be carnal you understand what i'm saying imagine seeing papa Ia Deboe now at a black market quickly trying to just fuel his car now it when watch that scenario the owner of an oil company that is tied to his church will be quarreled as if he failed to to fulfill a task why did you allow our father to be at a filling station and he takes responsibility there is a realm where nobody celebrates your birthday you have to remind everybody for instance now look up please now i'm not being sarcastic sit down sit down please sit down sit down i'm not being sarcastic this is ladies and gentlemen look up look up i'm just showing you that these are realities there is no reason to be listen there is no reason to be to feel bad because you are growing 
Are we together? There is a realm where you borrow credit. There is a realm where you calculate how much per text. There is a realm where you must be in touch with every uh, uh, what they call it every communication package to see the cheapest there is a realm where you enter a place and ask how much because you don't want to disgrace yourself and it's an honorable realm it's better to be wise than to to embarrass yourself and your loved ones but there is a realm where you don't think cost you think value and there is a realm where you don't think value you think experience they are all realms are we together you cannot be flying a business class and say please send me credit you are not honest you are not there it's very clear that you are not there now watch this all of us are seated here this is 2020 and your growth will determine your blessing lord everybody in my family came with a mindset that authorized darkness to destroy us but here at the transforming church i'm under a pastor who is mentoring me well it's time to be intentional about my growth you are learning leadership you are learning spirituality you are learning finance you are learning character you are growing are we together you when you get to a realm all the people in that realm have been cultured in a certain way so they know those who are not supposed to be there everybody in that realm should be well behaved even if you are not godly the ethics of that realm necessitates that you are cultured you cannot be a hooligan and find yourself in that realm so when you are in that realm and you are misbehaving sooner or later the body language of that realm will drive you out because you have not gotten there honorably you can escort a friend to that realm and with with digital precision they will fish you and say sorry let's show you a way out because something about your mental disposition betrays you there are people who are men of god but you have not sustained the intelligence the discipline the diplomacy the leadership and the spirituality to be given a mic to speak over a church you will start with a teenage group don't fight stay there make your mistakes embarrass yourself forget the verses misquote scripture make theological mistakes and grow when you grow you can have a little youth church they can say okay lead prayers lead praise and worship don't stand and say you are insulting me you don't know when i started ministry it is not the passage of time chronos it is the transition that is in your mind when it has to do with mental transformation overtaking is allowed are we together watch this you can be due for promotion but the manager knows what he's looking for he's not just looking for certificates he's looking for a requisite level of mental traits that befits that office and it is true that you have stayed that long in terms of the the time requirement but the truth is that as honest as you are you have not been able to sustain the kind of mental transformation that represents that company well it is not always tribalism every great leader here every ceo here will agree with what i'm saying it's true you can destroy a company and they will lose hundreds of millions because of one act that is a reflection of an inferior understanding someone can lobby a relationship that is millions of dollars worth and you just come carelessly and destroy it in the name of speaking your mind <laughs> are you seeing that now you don't like what i'm saying we'll, we'll soon wrap up and, and go away I'm, I'm a christian but i'm when i'm angry i give it to people the way it is you will remain poor if you talk like that because the bible said be wise as serpents did you know that one of the advantage of a serpent is his silence a serpent is not noisy it does not roar you know a lion is coming 
but you may not know a serpent is there and he says be as wise as that not everything observed is what speaking about let's pray in tongues for one minute Shali prahasko barahashe de belekotia. Krant e shalis kalebre de getiala haskabada. Shkabaruda zenekete barahaskadeya. Manda praska de belekato shalas. My life is shifting for sure. My life is changing for sure. My church is changing for sure. My business is shifting for sure. Hallelujah. Please sit down. One of the principles that is globally employed in leadership is that as you grow as a leader, you must begin to train and mentor the people that follow you to acclimatize to the mental construction that befits the realm you are transiting into otherwise you will be the only person who has transited and the people behind you will draw you back they are the depravity of their understanding will sabotage your efforts this is true for churches so you have a man of god who will grow he's now meeting new relationships international people but the core leaders that work with him are still localized their thinking is still localized and if given the opportunity they will sabotage profitable relationships you are not safe until everything around you grows with you you don't grow alone when you grow let your wife grow with you please hear what i'm saying because the version of you will be looking for the equivalent of the version of her and if you grow alone you will get to a point where you will be surprised why you are not connecting your language your love is there but your language is changing you are speaking and and dealing with people at a particular dimension that there is no there is no equivalence in that relationship it's why people who knew you before will get angry and say you used to know me you don't pick my calls now it's not about being bad is that you have grown and the truth is that if they do not grow with you in as much as you love them the gap will be too much you may be forced to wave them goodbye because they become an interruption to your focus you will always have to turn back to wave them please don't feel guilty if you edit your relationships on account of growth you will be persecuted but it's an honorable one time will justify you We were all classmates when we were growing up i agree but are you willing to grow are we not all fellow men of god i agree but are you willing to grow be careful the kind of people you introduce to your space because as you are transiting your space is fragile and you will need to bring people who represent an advantage to that realm do not sabotage the sacrifice of years because of the carelessness of an individual or individuals mental transformation what i'm saying is very hard i wish i were not the one sharing it it's an uncomfortable truth apply this to your office and you will start inviting certain kinds of people apply this to your church and you will start inviting certain kinds of people apply this to your family and certain kinds of people a realm has to come where you grow visitors cannot come to your house and wait for three hours when they're about going you say oh I, we were just trying to prepare something no no you are not being honest there is a realm where it is expected that if you want those kinds of people the blessings must be prepared you will tell your pastor thank you soon when you apply these truths and watch them change your life you will transit like an eagle and people will look at you and say from whence come at this and you will say i attended a conference and i was shifted shifted so let's do it one last time and then you go to sit down guys thank you please go back again this is someone in this place tonight saying apostle i'm going to throw away the fake life i'm going to throw away 
the garbages that continue to deceive me and i'm ready to grow i will grow through the study of the word I will subscribe to mentorship that constructs my understanding i will vie for specific knowledge targeted along the areas god is going to have me represent his purposes i'm not ashamed to start again i've been pretending as though i'm in the university of life now i've discovered my true state is primary one i will not be ashamed i will go back unashamedly and start again and this is you step by step Shakatoski Ataba. one book here by miles munro one book here by your pastor one message here by a mentor you are growing keep coming keep coming guys this is you praying very soon what you are, did not even pray for starts coming you are driving it yet is refusing to go no this money is too much it says i can't go your realm called me and now i am here I, I don't want a tv interview but you have gotten to the realm that will force it i don't want to meet great politicians they cannot you can't there's nothing you can do about it it came by growth this is the realm where you become a sign and a wonder this is the realm where people who knew you will say how did this happen this is the realm where people say can anything good come out of nazareth and then they see the son of man in power and glory this is the realm where champions live this is the realm where world changers live this is the realm where your seed and your harvest meet themselves together you don't even know what season you are in it's, it's a level of equilibrium where before you sow the harvest of yesterday looks like the harvest of today this is the realm where you don't lack is the realm where you do not have prayer points again your only prayer point is to know him is the realm where you don't think about money it is true it is the realm where no amount of giving to the kingdom becomes an inconvenience it is a realm where you are you are a happy person people insult you and there's no reason to be angry you forgive quickly because you are fortified by heaven everything around you encourages your joy there is no reason to be bitter this is the realm your pastor prays for that you come this is the realm that he cries for where you become like david this is the realm where no divination and no enchantment this is the realm where the 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 spells of men will bounce upon the wall of your intelligence where knowledge and wisdom become stabilizers of your life this is the realm where you don't fear your success this is the realm where when you give you don't weep because a system has been created to ensure that you remain on top this is the realm where the desires of your enemy will live with them in their hearts and kill them for nothing it cannot even come to fruition fortified by knowledge secured in yourself ladies and gentlemen this is the realm where you will be able to birth the purposes of god this is the realm where you will really understand life as god intended it to be this is the realm where you live in peace you have dominion over time you have dominion over the cosmos you have the relationships that secure you you have the anointing that lifts you up you have the intelligence that insists that you go forward you can choose to be where you want to be let's go back guys or you can choose to come to this realm so the bible says come up here come up here my sister the dream you saw is not a lie but this version of you will never see it my brother it is true the anointing you saw the mighty move of the spirit you saw yourself on stage with benny Hinn. yes but this version of you cannot hold benny Hinn. let's be honest with ourselves you saw yourself marrying a king's daughter congratulations for that vision it is true but this version of you may not live to see that that vision materialize 
let's not tell ourselves lies faith is not foolishness you must sustain the flexibility that allows for growth god told you you will mentor kings you will advise governments not this version of you this version of you does not have anything much to give them the version of you will be looking for favor from them it is a blessed version of you that is not looking for money that will be able to advise them is god speaking to us this is the place of encounter do to me what you want this is the place of surrender do to me what you want this is the place where my life is changed do to me what you want I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the transforming church because there he will teach us his ways and out of zion shall proceed the law where you are mentored you hold life and tame it like an animal you know that you will succeed you are not hoping you are not guessing you are not trying you are not wishing you have been persuaded This is what you do not get in a bank you do not get it in any other institution this is what brands the house of god the fortitude to change a man into a newer version of you you walk out of this place after the grace you walk back home rejoicing although in one room rejoicing although with a cup of curry rejoicing because it's only your body that is there your mind has taken a flight with the spirit we will rise in your name Adonai you reign on my I will rise in your name Adonai you reign on my I will rise Because you leave, Jesus, I leave. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you leave, Jesus, I leave today. I leave to pray. There is a generation that will call upon the name of the Lord. There is a generation that will tame wealth. And we will bring glory to his majesty. Unbending. Uncompromising. Whilst we are going. There are afflictions that we may meet on the way. But we are determined. We have set our faces like a flint. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. For the endless expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear rejoice not over me my enemies i may so carry today but my mind is already meeting with kings i'm dreaming with god through the world i'm dreaming with destiny through my contemplations i may not have the physical results now but do not laugh at me 
there is an apostle rising there is a prophet rising there is an entrepreneur rising hallelujah please sit down guys thank you I have to stop here we are going to pray I cannot continue another time the Lord will grant the grace but listen to me please pay attention this is a very solemn time right now there are other laws God will grant us the grace let me wrap up my session by teaching you that there are three levels of wealth the first level of wealth is called transactional wealth wealth that comes by exchanging value you turn value into products and services that are needed and useful you serve them with excellence to a targeted consumer base and you are rewarded that's what you call business but in the dealings of god that is the most basic dimension of wealth because the price you receive for the value you provide is fixed the second dimension of wealth is called transformational wealth here you do not sell your value you give it freely almost like a fool this is the blessing that comes to your life by reason of changing lives this is the kind of blessing that comes to a man of God for mentoring and raising people your value was not sold you pour your heart into people for years and for decades and as they rise they are con they they are compelled to communicate benevolence the advantage of this realm is that what is given to you is based on the perception of the value you have provided if i'm a millionaire or a billionaire and this is one thousand naira even if i'm bill gates i will not buy it one million naira because the price is fixed but when you change my life I bless you based on the perception of your impact in my life for one person that impact will amount to hundred thousand for one person that impact will amount to an estate you don't sell that value you give it freely it is painful while you give it that is the kind of seed that you give weeping you will raise people who will not say thank you you will mentor people who will trivialize your impact you will raise people who will say you are one of those who changed us but the key is to continue you who have continued with me but one day somebody will be wise enough and blessed enough to come back like the one leper and say i'm too grateful to leave you pastor i remember when you mentored me i remember when you reconstructed my spiritual understanding Today I own estates. Today I have foundations. Why will I allow you build a house? Please find rest. And let me show you how grateful I am. Two years ago I had the privilege of meeting my principal. When I started the seminary, he was my principal. And he mentored me well. He taught me well. Though an Anglican, he inculcated solid values in me and I saw him now an old man I said I have a prayer for you sir may God keep you alive and let me show you how grateful I am I pray and I cry to God that you will not die until you have eaten of the fruit of this life you have changed listen to me the blessings that you show men today whether they acknowledge it or not has monetary value the justice system of God will insist that you are blessed in your lifetime so on account of this let us not be weary in well-doing for the bible says we will reap in due season you raise the house help who goes around talking about you you raise people many of you have raised people and there's not one responsible person among them who comes to say thank you keep doing what you are doing you don't reap where you sowed you reap what you sowed 
you may sow in abuja and the blessings will come from the u.s god has that ability to route your blessings but listen to me the last dimension and this is the advantage that only kingdom citizens have is called sovereign wealth this is wealth by the finger of god wealth that comes by prophecy and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet they were preserved he says believe in the lord your god please those outside listen inside listen online listen believe in the lord your god so shall you be established believe his prophets so shall you prosper the prophetic has been abused i know i agree the prophetic has been an instrument of manipulating men i know and i agree sadly but it does not negate the fact that the prophetic remains an advantage in the financial space of every man's destiny that when dispensed within the coordinates of balance and truth it can program you into a wonder sometimes overnight every time people had financial tragedies in the bible it was not business that bailed them out it was the prophetic alas master for it was borrowed he said where fell it and the axe head began to float and what you left son of man can these bones live again some of you what you have placed here are death sentences millions of naira probably and only god can bail you out this is not the time to think what business will i do to bail myself out it's not a wise thinking when you are in trouble take advantage of the prophetic when it bails you out you will have the time to sustain the wisdom to arrange your business and continue please hear what i tell you it is true this is why the lord anoints us and grants us the privilege because the prophetic can program a climate of favor overnight that people who have no business blessing you are compelled by this influence please listen to me there are three prayer points i'm going to be praying now and then we're done this is a final session before our dear bishop would take from there and just bless us but please listen to me let me tell you the truth i know what it means to go through financial hardship i know what it means to go through financial troubles the man talking to you is not stupid he's not ignorant years ago we finished a crusade and i did not have the money to pay the sound people they were almost going to arrest me for preaching the gospel because a dimension of kingdom wealth was not added to my understanding the sick were healed blind eyes open deaf ears were unstopped but i was still in trouble please listen to me no matter what level you are there is still a higher dimension the lord saw the burden in the heart of your dear pastor and provided this opportunity the anointing flows from our scars your scar is the opening that allows the oil to flow run away from people who don't have scars they cannot bless you they can only hope to bless you we stand by the privilege of god's grace unashamed from our pain and our scars that is where the oil flows from death has worked in us so that life can work in others I know what it means to be embarrassed financially hmm. sometimes God lets you go through the things you will be saving people from that is the only way to create compassion in your heart when you are too detached from the pain of others the anointing cannot flow because compassion is a receipt that you have gone through the school of the spirit and compassion comes on the wings of pain this may be a message for some of you that what you are going through now where death ends is also where resurrection starts do not be ashamed of where you are 
apostle god called me to be a financial apostle but as it is right now i'm in debt of hundreds of millions i don't even know if i will survive this year listen to me many have come like you though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before listen you are not the first to go through this i assure you there are people who have seen the end of where you are going the end is peace the end is beulah and hepzibah you will get to realms where only those who have scars are allowed to pass through that door and you will find out that many are too innocent to be blessed your scar becomes what today is an object of your shame will become the reason why a crown is put on your head do not be ashamed of your mistakes do not be ashamed apostle i made mistakes in a business i lost money don't worry see it as your school fees in the school of wisdom in the school of wisdom the vice chancellor gives you back your school fees when you finish no matter how much you paid it is given back at your graduation so don't worry about what left you is waiting for you when you collect your badge of honor a testament of endurance when you stand before men like paul you can say let no man trouble me i didn't jump classes i went through it with pain i went through the school of wisdom i went through the school of honor i went through the school of value i went through the school of diligence i went through the school of grace i went through the school of relationships i went through the school of pain i went through the school of discipline and now i stand holding a testament of god's faithfulness let no man trouble me let no man trouble me do not question my wealth because i look scarless it is the beauty of the palace that has eroded the pain of adulam i was in adulam when you get there the next time you see someone who is down here you can tell him i was there let me show you how to rise follow them who through faith and patience please hold hands with someone we're rounding up tonight there are three graces that you must covet in the next five minutes that i have number one is called the esther anointing i didn't have the time to teach this but please give us esther chapter 2 and verse 15. someone's life is about to change hmm. fill me up till i overflow i want to run over want to run over fill me up till i overflow i want to run over fill me up God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. And Esther obtained favor in the sight. The Esther anointing works with the power of sight whoever can behold you the only person that cannot bless you when you carry this grace is a blind man but provided a man has eyes to see you they are compelled she obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked not all them that wanted to favor verse 17 please same scripture and the king loved esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than more than 
more than this is the grace that can give you lands you did not build you did not buy this is the grace that can give you jobs you did not apply this is the grace that can make men vow to tie their rising to you this is the realm where you step into prepared blessings number one the second grace please listen to me that must come upon your life this night is the grace for speed speed is a grace that demonstrates dominion over time because many of us have already been delayed as it is right now if you will follow the normal sequence of getting a job and being promoted after three three years you may spend your life there are some of us now you are the only one out of 18 people praying and waiting that you are blessed in africa there's no such thing as you are blessed alone there is at least four or five people when what you have is enough for you you are not free And the hand of God came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Jezreel my time is gone please just spare me two minutes we have to do this my heart will not rest if you do not carry this grace and we end this conference this way I prayed a prayer of favor for one month in my life sir pat robertson the founder of cbn i heard him say he prayed a prayer when he was about to start ministry he said lord give me three things give me wisdom give me favor give me the anointing of the holy ghost i went back to my secret place and i cried i said oh god of heaven i do not have any advantage in myself my territory does not bring any advantage that can help me can you look upon your servant with mercy there is a burden that is for a generation let me have the freedom to concentrate and focus on that which you have called me to do i will be distracted if i focus on the mundane things that distract men and god showed me the mystery of the esther anointing that picks a lady from the hamlet of shushan and makes her queen over 127 provinces the book of esther is a strange book no sword was used but her man was killed favor killed him number three the third prayer that i'm going to pray for you is the grace that compels the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And he called on Ziba and says, Go to Lodeba, bring Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth said, I'm a dog. What, are, what do you need me for? He said, Ziba, you and your children will plow the land. Can we do this in just five minutes? I want you to walk out of this place knowing that you carried something you did not come to church with. Mm. Men are changed by the graces that rest upon their lives. Please listen to me. You follow the walls where you will lose your soul, you will go to hell and you will still be broke. There is a more excellent way a way of honor and dignity where you are not afraid of your blessings because you know how it came where you give because you know that the system that brought it is reprogrammable fill me up till I overflow turn it into a prayer I want to run over run and run over Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. Listen, 
I submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and by the privilege of His grace, that this man talking to you, I have partaken of these graces. I know what it can do to men. These are the systems that program us and turn us into unending wonders. It makes you Beulah and Hephzibah. You become the delight of a generation. It does not happen just by eloquence. It does not happen just by oratory. It's a combination of graces that if received will turn your life into a wonder. Someone turn it into a prayer in one minute. Lord, I'm ready for an upgrade. I'm ready for a shift. Is someone praying? Don't be ashamed of your prayers. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Some of you are crying. It's time for my ministry to change. Lord, we love you as a ministry, but this financial hardship that is tearing us down, it's time for my family to call upon the name of the Lord again. One minute. Shaleda Salanda Sabragedia Shalatus. Some of you need to pray on behalf of your family. Lord, I am that Savior that you have granted the grace to arise that will judge the mountain of Esau. This cause of poverty, this yoke of hardship, it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder, the yoke from your neck, and that it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Yes, you are stepping into a new dimension. Believe me. Believe me. Outside pray. Inside pray. hallelujah hallelujah you've taken the pain and the sorrow away you've given me peace and undeniable there's no need to cry cause you're always with me you're my father my everything hey, hey, oh man my hey, hey, hey. lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why i will lift up my voice and say yeah, 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 yeah. Let's pray. I want to release the grace for speed. I have five minutes. I want you to receive this. Now, please listen. Please be your brother's keeper, whether you are an usher or not. We don't have the time. So you just help those under the anointing. As I pray this prayer for you, listen to me. 
the power of God is going to come on many of you and you will begin to run physically not by your making please help them so they don't injure anybody in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God over the transforming church I stand by the rod of another priesthood and I declare in the name of Jesus that at the count of three may that grace that makes for speed the overcomers grace that will cause you to run like Elijah let it come upon you right now one two three take that anointing right now take that anointing right now please bring them out if you can bring them out please bring them quickly let's just have it quickly in the name of Jesus take that grace receive that grace from the front to the back please help them I declare right now step into another dimension please bring them quickly let's 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 save time very quickly I release that grace upon you speed in ministry speed in business speed in career Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you grace is coming on you in the name of jesus now listen there are some of you by reason of this grace i'm still praying i'm declaring over you that it will not january will not end before you step into strange levels that grace for speed i'm seeing the number 21 there are 21 people here that anointing is coming upon you now take that grace now take that grace now please bring them out take that grace now inside outside shake it take it take it up speed 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 delay no more delay no more delay i prophesy speed i program a climate of speed upon your destiny upon your business upon your family no enchantment no divination no power creates delay over you in the name of jesus number two listen please the transforming church your pastor called it a mega shift a shift in a dimension listen to me you are about to receive the esther's anointing it's a mysterious grace you will marvel and wonder at the workings of this grace you will stand back and say what minute this that my life have you heard whether the bible says have you heard this proverb that in one day a nation is born there is a grace that can make a nation to be born in a day hallelujah now i pray that everyone receives this one the esther anointing the grace that squeezes into systems and structures and gives you your portion in life listen to me this is a grace that will grant you the heart of kings and nobles are you ready i want to pray for you at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus everyone inside outside the name that is above all names and that grace will cloak you like a mantle and turn you into another person are you ready now at the count of three the transforming church abuja nigeria and everyone following behold a grace that can shift you into dimensions never taught one get ready two get ready three shout jesus Take that place now. Take 
like that grace now I release upon you the Esther anointing strength favor favor over systems favor over governments take the grace for your ministry take the grace for your business take the grace for your family One last prayer and I'm done. Please listen to me. Every man's destiny is at the mercy of destiny helpers. Men anointed or dead to hold your hands and lift you. No man blesses himself in this kingdom. No man can lift himself in this kingdom. You will need the leverage of another man's credibility. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. Is there any man of the house of Saul? I want to pray for you. Listen, destiny helpers do not come on their own. Destiny helpers do not even know they are destiny helpers. They come because they are called prophetically. Hear me, the transforming church. I stand tonight by the rod of a higher priesthood. I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I prophesy to the north of Abuja, the south of Abuja, the east of Abuja, the west of Abuja. I speak to the two lip gates of this city. Ephata, be open in the name of Jesus. Ephata, be open in the name of Jesus. Ephata, be open in the name of Jesus. I command your helpers to locate you. I command your helpers to find you. I command your helpers to bless you. Ministry help us. Business help us. Destiny help us. Everybody that has what your destiny needs, I put pressure upon them. I compel them to respond to you in the name of Jesus I've taken the pain and the sorrow away you've given me peace undeniable there's no need to cry cause you're always with me you're my father, my everything. Hey, In the name of Jesus, every door that has been closed towards you, I stand by the God of heaven with the grace of your pastor and the grace of every servant of God here. I command that door by the power of the prophetic help that help that lady please be open now you will be surprised to see what happens to you i say it again be open now everything that has died in your hands your business your finances hear the word of the lord i speak to it talita kumi come back to life now come back to life now come back to life now anyone here called jobless you are trusting god for a job i stand by heaven in three months from today I speak by the spirit of prophecy in the name of Jesus your portion let it be delivered to you now
I pray for every business that has been failing in this church and around. I don't care why it failed. In the name that is above all names, I speak life to it right now. Please hear me. If there is anyone in this church or listening who is on any project and it has refused to be completed there is a grace called the finishers anointing he said i am alpha but i am also omega i decree and declare the grace that was on nehemiah that brought the building of the wall and even the finishing of the same in the name of jesus may that grace rest upon you now Tonight's meeting is a revelation of your pastor's love for you. Tonight's meeting is a revelation of the heart of a shepherd for you. In the name of Jesus, every financial embarrassment sitting on anyone's life, I speak and release a grace that is akin to the ark of God in the house of Obed-Edom in three months by the god of jeshuron that rides upon the wings of the wind let every embarrassment shame and reproach be out of your life now <laughs> hallelujah pastor sir is it all right if i pray it's okay please stretch your hands towards this request i'm standing in the grace of your pastor Egyptians you see today Paul said for this cause I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you I decree and declare everything written here I bow my knees to the God of my covenant and I declare let it be turned into a testimony now in the name of Jesus Christ let it be turned to a testimony now hear me whoever must lose sleep for this prayer to be answered he must be awakened from this night in the name of jesus taking the pain and the sorrow away you've given me peace undeniable please stretch your hands towards this request in the name of jesus the son of god I decree and declare the same way you drop this pick your testimony the same way you drop your pain pick your joy the same way you drop your sadness pick your happiness the same way you drop sorrow pick joy in the name of Jesus we manipulate systems and structures and insist that these prayers be granted in the mighty name of Jesus We're rounding up please stretch your hands towards this prayer this request many people sowed yesterday other people have sown today listen to me god is not a fraudster god is not a scammer the seed fell on all kinds of grounds even among the good grounds there were three kinds of harvest 30 fold 60 fold 100 fold i'm standing in partnership with your dear pastor and let me speak over this request some of you tied shame to this seed some of you tied disappointment to this seed the bible says that god is able to give your seed another body that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty the bible says god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency in all things that you will abound unto every good work look at me i stand by the god of heaven please hear me if you have never believed a man of god in your life please in the name of jesus who you know and died for you believe this not everybody is fake not everybody is a wizard there are people who have paid their price in the spirit and obtained the grace that has strengthened them don't sit down and generalize that every no no 
there are graces that are backed up by covenants register there is a throne that honors the speakings of men i stand by heaven and i speak to you i invoke upon you the mystery of divine supplies let the bird that brought food for elijah brook cherry locate you and bring you strange blessings in the name of jesus christ hear me everyone who sowed this seed yesterday and today you sowed your least level financially in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the god of the heavens let there be strange dimensions of financial testimonies from tonight in the name of jesus the transforming church can i pray for you i know that we are speaking to the entire globe i know we are speaking to the nation and the city but i share the burden of your pastor we need to pray i speak over every faithful member every worker that makes this assembly everyone who has stood by this great man of god in prayers financially by the god of heaven i shift you to a new level i shift you by prophecy in the name of jesus christ i'm rounding up and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my knees and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my loins and then he measured a thousand cubits and it was a river that i could not show the four realms of increase as connoted by this prophetic statement step into it now in the name of jesus christ step into it now in the name of jesus christ listen i speak to the earth the earth is one of the elements of the supernatural the bible says as for the earth out of it comes bread it said let the people praise thee O god and the earth not your business the earth i speak to the earth all oh, earth hear ye the word of the lord you stand as a universal point of contact i command you to